have been called medicine men, witch doctors, voodoo priests, depicted in the old Tarzan movies as primitive savages, even cannibals. Their rituals and beliefs dismissed as superstition. But what if I told you that behind those stereotypes and cliches is a healing power that is real, one that cures disease of all kinds on the African continent and might work just as well anywhere else. What we call voodoo or faith healing, there's a genuine knowledge of traditions that are four, five, six thousand years old that they use, which to us seem irrational and illogical. But um, we shouldn't just write them off. These are the healthcare providers for 85 percent of the people living on the African continent, where even today, access to modern doctors and hospitals is very limited and very expensive, if it's available at all. Nearly a billion Africans rely on traditional healers, and guess what? Many of the things that they're doing seem to work. They're very protective of their herbal knowledge and their traditions. But we've been trying with my foundation to work with them enough so that we can make their knowledge and experience available to people in other parts of the world. Traditional healers treat every affliction known to man, often with success. We just don't know how they do it. The work of the mind and the work of the body and the work of the spirit is something I actually drifted into myself, trying to figure out the mysteries of medicine and not limiting myself to what we think and know in these United States has been fascinating to me. Uh, and so I was very interested in that and I've been pursuing it for the last 15 years or so. But for the most part, I've waited to talk about this journey of discovery until very recently. The spread of this Ebola virus. Ebola. 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 Ebola virus in West Africa. One of the deadliest diseases in the world. An international public health emergency. Ebola spread to the U.S. is, quote, inevitable. The first diagnosed case of Ebola in the U.S. Two Americans who have been infected with a deadly disease. The disease is now officially out of control. The worst epidemic of Ebola since the disease was discovered broke out in 2013, then exploded in 2014, devastating West African countries I know well, primarily Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, but also Mali, Nigeria, and Senegal. On this day, not too long ago, I take part in a startling announcement. Africa's answer to Ebola. Dramatic scientific findings confirmed by top United States scientists. This is uh, probably the most impressive press conference I've ever been a part of. The notion that a deadly outbreak in Africa could be halted by Africans themselves probably sounds outlandish. Not only Ebola, but just um, the whole question of medicine, East and West. In these countries, they do not believe in traditional medical care. So someone could get off a flight and seek treatment from a witch doctor that who practices Santeria. This is a bigger fear. We're, we're hoping that they come to the hospitals yeah. in the U.S. They might not. Panic broadcasts like this one on Fox News couldn't have been more wrong. Santeria isn't even practiced in Africa. It's a religion that originated in the Caribbean. The first thing I thought of was a faraway place called Fatik and a man I've come to know well. Dr. Eric Bedosa is the founder of Prometra, which has worked to organize traditional healers throughout Africa and oversees the Malanga Center in the small village of Fatik, Senegal. Malango is uh, the Sierra language, who, who mean what needs to be done with proudness. Malango. And this center right now helps a lot of kind of diseases. How many patients can you handle? Each year, this center has uh, about 5,000 patients come from everywhere. I visited the Malango Center to see for myself in 2003. Life is a bridge between the past and the future. And we are that bridge. 
Eric Badosa is a similar bridge builder, a bridge builder between the past and the future. The future must come back and look at the past mm -hmm. to learn from the past. Dr. Badosa, one of the wisest men I know, was raised as a traditional healer, but he also is a Western-trained physician, and the Ebola outbreak had reached Senegal. I said to him, hey, look, what did you all do about Ebola before white folks got it? <laughs> he said, oh, we have our ways. I said, look, whatever it is you do, can you just give me a box of it? I asked you to send me a box of whatever it is you used in treatment. Really, when you ask me to find our ancestors' solution for Ebola, I know this solution exists. It has existed for? Millennium, long time ago. He sent me a FedEx plastic bag of twigs and leaves and things like this, which we took to Morehouse Medical School. Researchers at the medical school have been working closely with Prometra and Dr. Badosa for almost a decade, applying Western standards in an effort to measure the effectiveness of African herbal treatments. One of our central objectives has been to understand and build trust among traditional healers who are highly respected in West African countries. This partnership has led to today's promising scientific finding. We made an extract of those herbs at Morehouse Medical School. We sent the extract to Fort Detrick, Maryland. Fort Detrick is the headquarters of the United States Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, one of the only laboratories in the United States equipped to study the world's most dangerous viruses. They tested this extract against three different varieties of the Ebola virus in Petri dishes. And in each one, it stunned and stopped the growth of the virus. Then they tested it against hepatitis, several types of hepatitis. And in the Petri dishes, the same thing happened. And they came back to us saying that um, this extract, whatever it is, has tremendous potential in dealing with certain kinds of viruses. Personally, I'm not surprised. Our ancestors have a lot of way of healing, and we don't forget it. This uh, knowledge is not only for Africa. We can bring something to help. These are very exciting results for us because it helps show us that treatments that are based on experience by traditional healers in Africa have a basis in scientific fact. So we know it works. What we don't know is how it works. There's no explanation of it, but that doesn't go over too well in the United States, especially when it comes to healthcare. Western medicine wants and needs answers. You don't get along well with your Western physicians, even in Africa. This is true. The bigger picture is that traditional herbal therapies have potential. And we need to open our minds to uh, investigating these and see the scientific basis of these kinds of treatment. There's no reason why we should not evaluate and try to quantify and qualify 6,000 years of human experience with the best that we know today. Conventional medicine is too narrow to manage human life. And we think deeply that what we have in uh, our traditional healing system with more holistic mm -hmm. can help a lot to, to bring something to Western system. Something, and maybe even something big. I even think there's a cure for AIDS, but it might not be in the United States chemical laboratories. It might be uh, in the plant life on the African continent. In Patik, Dr. Eric Badosa has been treating HIV with traditional medicine. And on a recent trip, we found patients we interviewed 15 years ago. And they are not only still alive, but they're thriving. So what, doctor? She's been tested negative. Doctors, they're really 
uh, intrigued, actually. They're asking if it's the same person. At Morehouse School of Medicine, the herbal compound used by Dr. Badosa was put to the test. We first uh, weighed all those compounds, made the extract in water and methanol to check which one works. Later, and I will show you the incredible results. And uh, we will soon learn and have to admit that there's a lot of strong medicine there. Ritual dances, colorful dress, and yes, even animal sacrifice. Thousands gather on January 10th of each year in the small West African country of Benin to celebrate voodoo, a religion so important it has become a national festival. More than just a celebration, this symphony of sight and sound was established to reclaim and correctly explain an ancient, widely misunderstood system of spirituality that's critical to the social structure and guidance of an entire culture. You may be surprised to learn that the literal translation of Vu is peace and Du is world. World peace. We made fun of voodoo uh, in Haiti and Brazil and in the pockets of uh, Louisiana from which I came. We really didn't think about it then, but the gaudy commercialized trappings of voodoo in places like New Orleans are actually remnants of African traditions that spread along with slavery to the New World. My mother, cooking in New Orleans style, uh, had so many different kinds of herbs uh, that she'd put in a pot of red beans or a pot of gumbo. Uh, and for her, it always seemed to me that it was for taste. But much of this was also for wellness. Handed down from generation to generation since the days of slavery, folk medicine is still widely practiced, especially in communities throughout the South. A lot of people were raised by these uh, sages and elders and grandparents. So people are gaining respect for the fact that maybe I need to pay attention to what I heard, you know, Big Mama talk about. Kim Purifoy, the wellness manager at Sevananda, a natural foods market in my hometown of Atlanta, says your kitchen can be your pharmacy. Herbs are the source and the origins of most pharmaceutical drugs. I've made it for 85 years and I've had the best of medical care available uh, in the United States of America. But there's some things where I don't trust the doctors. <laughs> in the United States, herbs, vitamins, and other supplements are a largely unregulated industry that rakes in billions and billions of dollars each year. That has not been done to the same extent with uh, African medicine. Although you will find some at specialty markets like Sabananda. There is a very popular herbal tonic that people come from everywhere to Sabananda to get, and uh, it's created by an African herbalist. According to the National Institute of Health, more than one third of Americans use some form of what we now call complementary or alternative medical therapy. The trick is knowing what works. Dr. Eric Badosa knows what works. You started as a child learning about the world from your grandfather. When I was uh, four years old, he told me it's time now to begin. And he teach me a lot about uh, how we can learn from animals. Dr. Badosa tells the story of discovering a little bird nest high in a tree and climbing each day to look inside. There are two babies, but only one go out from the, the net. And one bird was, the eyes is always closed. Each time I see the bird's mother or the father, I don't know, come to the bird, the, the bird net with the same plant. A few days later, the both of the bird go out from the, the nest with the eyes open. 
And since this time, I use the same plant to heal conjunctivitis. It's working. So you learn from the birds how to, to heal, heal conjunctivitis. conjunctivitis. As he grew older, young Eric Bedosa came to understand plants and animals so well, he attracted the attention of the respected elders. The wise people chose me to lead this kind of knowledge. To leave their knowledge with you? Absolutely, yes. Eric Bedosa then decided to become a physician, giving him credibility to argue traditional healing and Western medicine are not incompatible. All good knowledge must be spread. Three hours outside of the crowded capital city of Senegal, Dakar, is a small village where big things are happening. You won't find it unless you're looking. I ended up in these 85 years visiting over 152 countries. And everywhere I went, I tried to understand the people there, and I tried to learn as much from them as I could. In 2003, I accepted an invitation from Dr. Eric Bedosa, a soft-spoken miracle worker who had, for the first time, organized traditional healers from across the entire region at a place he named the Malango Center, located in a remote village called Fatik. At that time, the Ford Foundation was funding the first clinical study of patients at the Malango Center. We are sure that because of traditional medicine, because of African science, we have a lot of things to go, to give to Western system. So we want to have partnership to share our knowledge. I got the greeting of a lifetime. And then I saw with my own eyes the work being done here. Even without a medical laboratory or standard diagnostic tools, traditional healers have a variety of ways of determining what's wrong with somebody. For instance, based on a particular complaint, you might be asked to urinate near an ant mound. If the ants come and gather in the urine, you got sugar in the urine. <laughs> and they began to treat you for diabetes. Among the healers at Malango Center were specialists qualified in their own right to treat everything from hypertension to sickle cell anemia, primarily using herbs with a little help from the spirits. They think of these medicines as a gift of God. Conventional Western medicine has definitely underestimated the power of plants. 4,500 miles from Fatigue, near Chattanooga, Tennessee, Nationally recognized herbalist and psychologist Holly Ritchie treats her own patients and works in collaboration with local physicians who have become more and more open-minded. For a long time there has been a resistance to using holistic medicine and to using herbal medicine. On her land and in greenhouses open to the public, Holly Ritchie grows and sells a variety of plants including the medicinal herbs used in her healing practice. People will say like, oh, herbs, I believe in those. And I've told them that you really don't need to believe in them because it's chemistry, that they're going to work because it's science. It's a chemical compound that's going to actually do something to the cells of your body. Long before she studied to become an expert in the field, no pun intended, Holly Ritchie learned about folk remedies from her own mother. We're from Appalachia, and there was a strong push by the doctors to tell um, the mothers that these were ineffective and not safe, and that they needed to use the um, drugstore um, chemical pharmaceuticals. But pharmaceuticals, even those made from herbal extracts, often focus on a component or multiple components believed to be the essence of a plant, missing the bigger picture. It's working as a whole with so many variables. What Holly Ritchie has in common with Eric Bedosa and traditional healers an ocean away is the educated belief 
that nature has given us everything we need. We just have to figure out what it is, not necessarily why it works. I learned from Dr. Bodasu. As long as there has been pain, there has been healing. But some beliefs cannot be validated by science or quantified. For instance, the medicine does not heal the body. The body heals itself. Uh, the medicine just uh, uh, stimulates the healing process. But that healing process in the African traditions is never just a physical process. It always has strong spiritual, emotional, uh, and energetic movements attached to it. Even during slavery, the singing and the dancing was what made life livable. It's almost like you can't get well if you can't dance. <laughs> well, I sure didn't feel like dancing in Senegal. In fact, by the time I got there to fatigue, I was having difficulty just walking, and I don't take pain pills. I've had cartilage missing in my knees since I was about 65. And yes, doctors, as well as friends, many times have urged me to consider knee replacement. I'm not afraid of surgery, but I've been reluctant. There's something about sawing my bones. <laughs> and so I've decided that I was going to find alternatives. I really wasn't looking for those alternatives here. But Dr. Badosa realized I was having a hard time getting around, and he insisted. And we try and do something. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. And I don't want the thing that traditional medicine is just used for poor people. No. This is a big mistake. Traditional medicine can find solutions for rich people who don't have solution in the Western system. Well, by no means am I rich, but I agreed to follow Dr. Badosa into a small building. Inside a group of healers gathered. I was asked to roll up my pants leg, and one of them went to work. The traditional healer did something uh, to, to, to feel better. Good. Okay. So, thank you. He lightly sort of just touched my knees, moaned and recited and blew a little air on it and spit on it a little bit. And it was, uh, uh, it was a kind of weird experience. When I got up, I wasn't hurting anymore. And I couldn't believe that. <laughs> My rhythm came back. Uh, and I was dancing and not hurting. Many times since then, I've wondered if my relief was a sort of placebo effect. I was feeling so good after his treatments that I didn't want it to be wrong. I can say only one thing with certainty. It gave me some relief for that trip. A few years later, even as I climbed the mountains of Rwanda to visit gorillas in their natural habitat, now 15 years after my visit to Fatigue, I finally started using a scooter. I'm sorry that you don't come often, you know. When you come the last time, it's just 10 minutes of energy. But I think the last time you come, we can give you more. This isn't told to prove or disprove anything. But for me, it was certainly memorable. It honestly feels better. It's an amazing experience to visit and to try to understand traditions, culture, that they used, which to us seem irrational and illogical. We shouldn't just write them off. There has been amazing adaptability to very difficult conditions of survival on the African continent. And that includes conditions like Ebola. It was remedies from roots, from plants, and so on. And even AIDS. You can meditate anywhere, but you want the conditions to be as quiet as possible. All right, let's close our eyes. Imagine floating peacefully on water the color of pink lemonade. I learn how to get out of the way and I help other people get out of the way. 
Among other things, Kofi Kandwani teaches meditation at the Morehouse School of Medicine. The goal is to get to the deeper levels of your mind. Kofi Kandwani knows the tranquility of one of the most amazing places in West Africa. One of the wonders of uh, Senegal uh, is just about an hour from the major city of Dakar, Lac Rose, the Pink Lake, a miracle of nature that provides an unusual livelihood for the people who live here and is said to provide something even more unusual. The local people feel as though there are some wonderful healing powers in this Pink Lake. And this is a man who has devoted his professional life to the pursuit of such things, looking for the truth behind the myth. The legend of this lake. What are some stories you have heard from the people? When people have problems, they go to see the native doctor and the herbalist who advise them to come and throw something in the water. Mm -hmm. You do that mm -hmm. uh, to have a good chance, mm -hmm. or you do that to be protected. The Pink Lake contains a form of algae that reacts with sunlight. Some of these algae, algae, uh, algae yes. Yeah. So, sometimes these algae, they form the color rose. He said, even it is these plants that are responsible.